Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. Okay, so we've got the next installment of the best of 2018, and today we are talking about whetstones. To the 320 to the 400 stones. These stones here can handle very light repairs, but mainly they're used to sharpen very dull knives. These stones here can handle light repairs, anything with a one millimeter chip and below. I'll start from one end and go to the other, and we'll just go that way. So this is the Chapman Glass 320. The Chapman Glass 320 is one of the best feeling stones in this category here. It has a very nice luxurious feel, very dense, but also very smooth. I've mentioned that I felt that it's actually smoother than a 320, or at least it feels like it to me. It feels more like a 400 to a 500 grit whetstone. If you're new to sharpening, or if you are a, you know, a seasoned pro, and you wanted a stone that really gave you great feedback, uh, and just a very pleasurable experience while you're sharpening, the 320 definitely is that stone. I don't use whetstones in this category very often because once your knives are sharp and you are sharpening once a week or once every other week, you don't really need to go below a 700, 800 bit whetstone. If you're sharpening your knives once a month, then stones in this category will make a little bit more sense. Um, I've never flattened this stone at all. I've had about a dozen sharpenings on it from knives uh, with a 55 Rockwell up to 63. And it's still just as flat today as it was the day I got it. Uh, so overall, very good grit stone, definitely highly recommended. So the 320 grit shaft and glass stone is probably the best feeling stone overall. If you wanted a stone that gave you the best sensation during sharpening, the 320 grit stone is gonna be that stone. It's also the slowest wearing stone in this category here, and also the stone that can sharpen probably the widest range of knives. In terms of an overall performing leader, I would say it would be the Shapton Glass 320. The Shapton Pro 320 is a stone that I've been using um, less this year, but a ton last year. Uh, I did a couple of repairs on it this year just to see how high I can push this stone. And the pros of this stone is that it's very affordable and it's very flat out of the box. Um, has a decent feedback to it. It's not very snappy, but snappy enough to where you know what this knife is doing on the stone. Um, overall, a very good stone, a great value stone in this category, definitely. Uh, the sweet spot for this stone here, I think is in the 57 to 59 Rockwell. 60, it can handle okay as well. But I think, you know, if you have knives in that range, I think this is a really good stone for that. Um, if your knives are in the 61 to 62 range, it'll be a little bit slower and you'll see that the stone actually wears down a lot faster in that range. But overall, decent stone, just not quite as resilient as the glass stones. The Chatham Pro, 320 is a stone that is good for knives in the 57 to 59 range of Rockwell. Um, it's a great stone for a particular range of knives. Anything above that, below that, it's just not the best stone out there. For the price, it's a very good value leader. Um, and overall, a decent stone for those on a budget. Uh, this here is the Naniwa Superstone 400. I don't want to say a whole lot about it. I've always maintained that the Superstones have a, a, a grit rating system that's very hard to understand. Um, I think any stones in the Superstone lineup under a thousand is uh, is not performing up to par. Um, for example, a knife with a 62 Rockwell would take about seven passes to develop a burr versus two to three passes on the Shotgun Pros. To me, at, a, at the 400 grit level, that is not acceptable. Uh, so that's just me though. So I'm not gonna say too much about this stone other than the fact that I don't love it. It's way too slow cutting and it has just more polishing agents than ideal at the 400 grit level. To me, it's not a stone that I'd recommend for any budget because the same price on the Shapton Pro, it's a better performing stone overall and it's a truer grit than the 400 Superstone. In terms of raw performance, it's just way too slow. It loads up really quickly and just not true to grit, at least in my experience. This is the Naniwa Chosera 400. This one here is very interesting. I've seen lots of videos or a number of videos from YouTubers that say that this is their favorite whetstone at the 400 grit level. <laughs> I disagree. The feedback is there, you know, don't get me wrong. It has decent feedback, but just the hand feel of this thing, it just is not a pleasurable stone to sharpen on. I don't know what it is. I can't really put my finger on it. There are plenty of uh, knife reviewers and Western reviewers that are much more experienced than I am who love this stone. Uh, I just I just don't understand it. I've sharpened a, a very wide range of knives on this stone and I can't really get 
you know, a knife that I love to sharpen with on this stone. So I don't, I don't really understand it. Um, I've heard hunting knife people love this stone. It's relatively fast cutting, so it's not, a, it's not a slow stone. So don't get me wrong there. It just doesn't have the same feedback and tactile feel that I like. The highest rock wall I've sharpened on this stone here, I believe is a 65 with the half 40 and it's sharpened it fine. So in terms of raw speed and performance, it's a good stone, but it just doesn't feel good sharpening it. I just feel like I'm scratching a chalkboard the entire time I'm using it. All right, so this is the Suhiro Cirax 320 and the SKU number, I think it's the Suhiro Cirax 403. So I know, so, so he, there goes Suhiro again with their naming SKUs. <laughs> I don't know why there's a four in this. It's a 320 grit stone, but there's a four in the SKU. Odd. Um, this stone here is one of my favorite splash and goes in the you know sub 400 grit level. Um, decent cutting speed. It has a really nice feel to it. Because it is soaking, it has a much more organic feel than some of the splash and goes I've reviewed. In terms of wear, it is a medium wearing stone. I wouldn't say it's very fast and it's definitely not very slow because you will see slower as you're sharpening on the stone. What this stone has over some of the other stones is it's got great feedback. Because it is a soaking stone, I tend to like soaking stones more than splash and goes, um, especially at this level here. Um, in terms of speed, it's probably a little bit slower than the Tracera and a little bit slower than the 320 grit stone uh, sharpened glass. But overall, it has a really good balance of speed, tactile feedback, and wear. Uh, the best thing about this stone here is the tactile feedback. In terms of price, I think it's also one of the better price stones in this lineup here. Um, they start at, I want to say $40 at the one inch thick stone. And I want to say this one here is a little bit, uh, I want to say it's about 60 or 70. Uh, but definitely a lot of stone for your money. Uh, a very good stone. I definitely like this stone a lot. It's a stone that I have always kept in my collection, no matter how many other stones I get here. Um, I find myself using this stone as a coarse sharpening stone more than any other stone that I own. So this stone here, I would say between this and the Chateau Glass 320 are my two favorite picks. Between the two stones, I would say if you have knives heat treated over 63 or 62, Go for the Shafting Glass Stones. If you have knives up to a 62, go for the Suhiro. If you don't want to deal with flattening your stones um, very often, the Shafting Glass Stone is the better stone. It's denser, it stays flatter out of the box, and it definitely will stay sh flatter for many, many more sharpenings. I would say that I've used this stone now about, uh, I would say about close to a dozen times, if not a dozen times. I've never flattened it. And I've used the Cirax about a dozen times and I've not flattened it, but you can feel that it has a slightly less even surface uh, or flatter surface relative to the Chapin Glass 320. For everyone who's getting into sharpening and you are really confused about Gweststone grits, click on the link below or in this window here. It will break down at least what I think what some grits are and what to choose for what type of purposes. It hopefully will clear some of the issues and confusion you have about how to choose your whetstone grit and uh, which is best for you. Quick preview of the rest of the year. We've got uh, best sharpening whetstone, which is the 500 grit range to the 2000 grit range. Then we have our best polishing whetstone from the 3000 grit to 10,000 grit. And then we have best knives coming up soon. So I am doing my absolute best to get as many videos out as quick as I can. And for those who aren't aware, in November, I gave away over 140 knives on my channel. Uh, to my Patreon supporters. Then I gave away another two dozen knives to my subscribers on YouTube. So tons of giveaways that happened in November. So hopefully all those giveaways have made it to their new owners and that they're using it for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, then I've got my repairs coming up very soon. So my knife restoration series will be coming maybe in December or probably in the beginning of January where I restore knives and all of my knives. Um, that I repair will be given to a Patreon supporter and all the money that I receive from Patreon in 2019 are going to charity. So if you guys haven't heard that, I'll post a video link explaining how I'm doing that. All right, well, that'll be it for this video. Thank you guys for being here. Give the video a thumbs up if you guys liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and I'll catch you in the next one.